metal. And that was why I put it there. It was a box I built. Let me tell you, my nerves were shot planning on building this thing because I am no good at building with wood. Seems like no matter how many times I measured and cut, measured and cut, measured and cut, they still were the wrong size. So, but I got it done. Um, you may be wondering what this is. Um, just give you a few clues. This is cement board, so non-burnable. I had exactly 12 inches width to make that box. See, it's about 12 inches wide. There's the studs on the inside. The top's already done. It's insulated in there and everything. I still gotta build a, support network I guess for the insulation that's going on the side, the bottom and the other side. Nothing is going on this end. And hopefully there'll be enough room for the heat to come out of there, go up and kind of waft up and out. Of course I'm not going to be storing my gasoline here then. But that took me two full days. <laughs> Not just to build the box, but to get it all set up, hooked up. There's the air conditioner. There's the swamp cooler. There's one of my heaters. And there's my new propane uh, 20,000 BTU RV furnace. So it actually runs on a thermostat, with a thermostat, which I've already got here on the wall. Took this out of the RV. Propane's all hooked up, batteries all hooked up, and thermostat's all hooked up. That's it. Four wires and one propane line. Like I said, though, the biggest concern of mine was getting that box so that it came out right. Because I am no good when it comes to lumber, to, like I said, when it comes to lumber. Now, this may look like kind of a tight fit. Uh, according to the directions, it only requires 5 eighths of an inch on the left side, the top, and the right side from combustible materials, other than the very back end where the exhaust goes out. So I've got about an inch and a half or so on the top, over an inch on each side, and about four to six inches on the bottom. That's why that return register is there, because I knew it was gonna, the box was gonna come out bigger than what the heater furnace required. So I made sure of that. So now it's got this return air. I had planned on putting this up a little higher. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a mark there, across and down. That was where originally I wanted the furnace to go, it was up to about here. But if you remember on the outside, if I put it up there, there wouldn't have been any room between the back of the furnace and that wavy metal I have on the back side of my uh, solar panels. But it works, it works beautifully. I was, uh, two things I was really concerned about. One was the amount of noise coming out of that thing. And one was the amount of airflow. I was thinking because I kept wanting to buy a 16,000 BTU. They didn't have any. Every time I had ordered it, It'd be back order two, three weeks before delivery, and then the delivery date would show up. Oh, there's a, a, a mess up in the thing, in the system, whatever. Uh, we'll have to give you your money back. Order it again if you want. So I finally went ahead and got the 20,000. It's actually 19,000 BTU. Uh, like I said, I was worried about the, uh, the, the fan making way too much noise and the airflow being way too much in here, in this little tiny space. But it works perfect. Um, I've only turned it on two mornings. Of course, the two mornings it was going to get to 106 that day. But I uh, turned it on, fired right up, turned it off, shut down perfectly. I had been debating 
I'm getting a furnace here for, well, a couple of years now. What kind? Those wall furnaces, like my parents used to have in our house uh, in Minneapolis. Um, that was natural gas, but I know they make them that run on propane. Yeah, one of those tall, skinny ones, about a foot and a half wide and that, six feet tall. That, uh, those are just way too much money and way too difficult to install. That would require my running a vent up through the roof, and I didn't want to do that. So, and they have these, these cheaper wall models much like the one that I have, except it's actually vented to the outside. I could have gotten an Ashley Hearth for about $400. But up until I started looking, I'd never heard of Ashley Hearth. So, and I wanted something that was going to last, not break down in the middle of winter, give me fits like the wall, wall heater that I had last winter. It went out on me. So oh, I had to order a new one. But this is a Suburban Furnace. Now I have a Suburban Furnace in, in the RV that's over 30 years old, still works great, and I'm sure has never been touched as far as maintenance or anything else. So if I get 10 years out of this furnace, that'd be more than good enough for me. Um, the furnace itself was $619. Um, all the fittings and cement board and hoses and wiring and caulk and nails and screws and everything else I needed. Probably brings the price up to about 800 bucks. But I'm done now. It should be all set. You can tell by the angle of the sun, or the shadow I should say, that it's still early in the morning. The puppy's already had breakfast. Already done all the running around. Ruger, for some reason, is already laying under the Jeep, which I can't help but think it's got to be hotter than over here. But he doesn't like laying over here for some reason. I don't know why. He really likes laying under the Jeep. And then around the noon, he'll come stand up here by the door, waiting for me to let him in and turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> He's getting spoiled. They're all getting spoiled. So. And the birdies are still loving my bird bath. I've seen uh, one totally red cardinal. And some of those gray and red cardinals come up here. There's another new nest with three more blue eggs from the curved bill thrasher, I believe Don said it was, in that uh, palo or the cactus thing behind the cabin. Okay, uh, this furnace is what the, is known as a direct vent discharge, meaning that there's no duct work with this. It all comes directly out the front. All the air comes out the inside of this box. On the outside of the box is the return air. That's where it gets the air to blow through here. And of course, it's a sealed combustion chamber, so you no know, gases or whatever should get in here. But like I said, they require five eighths of an inch top, five eighths of an inch left and right, two combustible materials. Um, like I said, I have it well over an inch on all sides, uh, and it's encased in cement board, half inch thick cement board. Um, it was like 11 bucks a sheet and I learned the trick. I knew that I could get it done with one sheet but history has told me that if I bought one sheet I would end up screw screwing up one of the pieces and not have enough to finish it. So I bought two sheets. I got it all done with one sheet. <laughs> it just saved me a trip back to the store was all. Um, but I learned about putting one of these things in uh, somebody was building a, a, one of those tiny houses on a trailer. Uh, it was a few years ago. Uh, the channel was called Tiny Nest. So but I finally came across it when I was researching on putting this in. 
and uh, he built uh, inside of the, the, the tiny nest a place to put a heater just like this underneath the cabinets. Um, There's a very detailed, meticulous uh, build all the way from the design through uh, building, completion, and beyond is the way they say it. Uh, they haven't really put out a video for over a year, but I learned a lot of stuff from them even though it wasn't going on a trailer. Just learned different tips and tricks and hints and like I said, the guy was very meticulous, very methodical, very complete. Uh, so, you know, if that's what you're looking for, might be interested. Tiny Nest, I'll have a link up on top somewhere. Um, like I said, this uh, works beautifully. Um, it's got plenty of any room for air. Like I said, it's all in a cement board encasing, so won't prevent a fire, but uh, may help stop one. And uh, that's how I got it all. Oops. That's how I got it all hooked up. I just had to put a T in there, and then ran a hose up and over to the furnace. And that was another thing I had to do was leave little sides for the hose to go through and it only draws 2.7 amps of 12 volt so that's less you know it's between 30 and 35 watts when it's running so. but it doesn't blow out too much air at once it doesn't overwhelm me it doesn't get too hot to overwhelm me um, and it doesn't make too much noise. It's actually quieter than the inverter fan. So <laughs> I've gotten used to the inverter fan. So but, all ready for winter now. Perfect timing in the middle of July. All right, here's the furnace. And here's the way I did the uh, underneath area. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got it. It's mounted on this, ah, uh, where is it? This, this board right here. It's a one by two slot. I have three of those going all the way across. I have a piece of cement board, I doubt if you can see it, cut just the size of the furnace. Quite get into there far enough. So there's lots of air flow up and around the sides on both sides, all the way back. And uh, since this furnace was designed for an RV which runs on 12 volt, it's very easy to hook up two wires for power and two wires for the thermostat. That's it. The two wires for the power, one goes to the positive and one goes to the negative. That's it. Four wires to hook up. And you can't hook the thermostat up wrong unless you get a special thermostat, but just a standard regular mechanical thermostat. You've got two wires, you hook it up on either one, the, other, the wire that's left goes on the other terminal. That's it. So, like I said, you can't hook them up wrong, but I think with all that extra air flow that I have down there, it should be more than enough air for what I'm going to need. I know it's much more than is required for this. It actually doesn't require any on the bottom. Um, you might recognize where I'm at. There's the TV, there's the front door. Look at all that space we got over there on the floor. The room we got over here. Um, there's one dog. There's Susie. And there's Remy. And here's the couch. There's the end of the couch. <laughs> and there's the other end of the couch. <laughs> some reason, this is all their favorite place to lay. I understand it's closer to me, but come on. Every time I want to stand up, I got to be very careful. 
one of them's laying there. So. Say hi, Susie. 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 Say hi. Hi, Susie. That's me, Susie. Say hi, Remy. Hey, Remy. You good puppy. Who you good puppy? Ruger. Ruger. That's Ruger being Ruger. <laughs> and there it is, all completely completed, other than paint. Still gotta paint it. But it's all done. It's all insulated. Uh, from those two pieces that uh, the rats left, I was able to salvage enough to get that thing all insulated. It's all done on this side too. The only thing I still got left to do now is paint it. And whether I do that today or this fall, couldn't tell you. Well, I know that I'm not doing it right now. But that's my little furnace. And uh, hopefully that's enough room above where the heat, the exhaust comes out up to the panel to where it won't melt the panel. If it seems like it's getting too hot, I'll just put a piece of that cement board over it. So that'll help dissipate the heat. I got more than enough. I got a full three by five sheet plus a bunch of little pieces of well, one big piece, all kind of scrap pieces off the other one that I cut to make that box. So, there's all cement board all the way around. Uh, then the frame, insulation, and the T111 siding all the way around, other than the front. So, I'm actually kind of looking forward to winter now. <laughs> and, here's my new fancy digital programmable thermostat. It's a Honeywell home model. Um, Amazon had these for like 60% off on their uh, whatever their days were a couple of about last week. So I got it for like 16 bucks, less than 15 bucks instead of 32. So I bought it. It works on only a two wire furnace. So, and then it's programmable via the batteries. You put uh, two double, triple A batteries in it. But it works, works beautiful. But it's still too hot to really test out the furnace. <laughs> so it's gonna have to wait. I mean, here it's not even noon. And it's 91 degrees, which is actually kind of cool. So normally by now it's over 100. So, today's supposed to be about 106. Tomorrow about 105. And the air conditioning setup I have is working beautifully. What's up? What's up, Susie? Are you good, Susie puppy? Are you good, Susie? You're such a good Susie puppy. Are you good? Look, look, look. Could you quit the licking? 